Commission meeting of July 9th, 2018 order. We do have a quorum. Adopt the agenda. What is the wish of the commission? I make the motion to adopt the agenda. Second. A motion by Mr. Grishek, second by Mr. Kleinschmidt to approve the agenda. Any discussion? <laughs> Hearing none, all in favor, saying no, saying aye. 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 All the same sign. Motion carries. Approval of the minutes from May 14, 2018. Motion for approval. Commission? I second. Got a motion by Rob and a second by Kara to approve. All right. Sorry. Right. Oh, right. so one of those are names. <laughs> Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same saying sign. Motion carries. Public hearings, requests relating to a partial vacation of a realignment of a public right of way, request of vacation to include portions of Cherry Avenue East and First Street Southeast and portion of Second Street Southeast, south of Seventh Avenue Southeast. Applicant BDH and Young. Property owners CHI, St. Gabriel's Hospital, and just the 15 Second Street Southeast. Parcel numbers are attached. Ben, have a description on this one? Or sure. Um, yeah, Greg can take a lot of this one. But uh, okay. our first request here is to vacate the public right of way as shown on the screen up there. Two different parts of Second Street and Cherry Street. That's related to. Uh, Next two applications that we have before us. Okay. Yeah, so the uh, CHI is requesting to uh, put an addition onto their building uh, for the hospital there in order to facilitate that. They're looking at vacating uh, the cross action area, both the yellow and the blue. Uh, the blue is on 2nd Street, and the yellow is on Cherry Avenue, uh, this, this south portion right there. I know the applicant is here this evening if they wanted to add anything to that. We would still have the city sewer water uh, running through there, which will require a utility easement on that portion of it. Um, but the request tonight is to uh, have a public hearing for the vacation of those two portions of the street. Isn't there a house north of that parking lot there? Will they be able to access their home? Yeah, so the, the two lots just north of the parking lot there uh, are owned by the same property owner, <coughs> and so so they would still have frontage onto Second Street portion of that would be would be vacated, which would be adjacent to private property at that point. Um, but the, the house is moving right there. That's that's where the house sits, and the red car is essentially where the uh, vacation would uh, would begin. Okay. And itself, that would, would be uh, would be taken care of at that point. Okay. That's the request to tonight. Okay. Okay. Are you talking about all the parcels in the eight hundred block? Right now, we're we'll talking for public comment here in just a minute. Hang on, please. <coughs> Do you guys have any other questions in regards to that, or do you want the applicant to speak in regards to their request? Yeah. Anybody from PDH want to speak? Uh, good evening. My name is Patrick Giordano. I'm the project architect. For, for this project and really the, the vacation I think you, you have to see the overall concept plan for the, the uh, expansion of the medical clinic um, and in order to do that we've realigned that road slightly to uh, make the access off of First Street uh, uh, um, the primary access to the facility um, we're really trying to help minimize the traffic uh, through the neighborhood on the back side and so by uh, providing this kind of new alignment and this new primary entry off of Cherry Avenue, off of First, we think we're uh, not only improving access for the hospital and the, and the 
clinic, but we're minimizing uh, the impact on the adjacent residential area. So Cherry Avenue is going to be blocked off. Hold on a minute, we'll have public comment. You'll have to get a chance to speak here. Just hang on. No, I mean, both Cherry <coughs> and Second will continue to flow through the site. But if I stop, I'm going to walk up to the. So here's the existing Second Avenue. Instead of it just coming down and 90 over to Cherry, we're just realigning it slightly angular and then to Cherry. So there's still continuous flow through that site. Um, it's just. Uh, kind of softens that flow, and again, our goal is to bring the primary traffic now up first on the cherry into these lots and minimize the traffic that kind of comes up and around and currently to this back parking lot, which will now be more focused on just staff. So you'll have morning traffic and end of the day traffic from staff, but you won't have that continuous daily traffic because it should all be coming in off of first <coughs> and into cherry. Second Avenue. Why are you talking about second Avenue? Please just wait. She's got public comment okay. coming up, then we can yeah. answer questions. So anybody from the commission? Have any questions? Are you going to tear the whole house first? On the corner, I know you own it. Yes, the goal is to tear that house that down and park. increase the parking, again, for the patient traffic to the building. And we're trying to minimize the amount of traffic that wants to park on the street, on 2nd Street and some of the adjacent streets, and really improve and condense the parking to the hospital site specifically. Will there be a net gain in the number of parking spaces? Yeah, yes there is. There's a net gain, uh, I'm not sure, I think the number was about 46 spots that we've increased. Okay. <coughs> Any other questions from the commission? Still, really okay, thank you. <clears throat> Any other questions for public comment? Okay, we'll open up for public comment. If you wish to speak, raise your hand. We'll have to stand. Uh, typically, individuals will have be allowed two minutes. You should be germane and concise. Any further shall not exceed two minutes with a maximum of two appearances. So, need name and address for record. If anyone wishes to speak, my name is Candy DeShane. My address is 802 Second Street. Yeah, 804 Second Street Southeast. Sorry, I own the two lots directly next to where this is all happening. Um, I strongly oppose this. I already struggle for parking for my own personal, and they're going to take out basically every parking from my front sidewalk all the way across my street, like all the way to the end of the block, which eliminates most of the people. Um, the other, the street alleyway is going to bring traffic behind my house. I have two dogs, two kids. It's just going to be too much traffic too close to my house. It already is quite a bit. Thank you. I don't know what else I should say. Anyone else wish to speak? I just want to understand this, that's all. And I love my glasses at home. I'm Kate Fessler, Ward 1. I live in the 700 block. Just readers, that work? The readers. I don't know. No. <laughs> <laughs> I can't see that. I'm sorry. Oh, anyway, uh, this, this sheet here. Can, you, can we get your address, please? 718 Second Street, Southeast. Thank you. Uh, I'm not in the 800 block. It doesn't directly affect me. First of all, I want to know why the hospital is building the building and what is it for? Do you know? It would be to your best interest to use your two minutes to ask the questions and then we can answer them afterwards. So, okay, you well got your questions? The, that's one question. The other is you listed parcels on here, and what are they? Are they uh, lots on the 800 block? What are these parcels that you listed on this paper? And 
I don't quite, okay, he said second, it'll read, I don't know what he said. If it redirected the traffic from 2nd Avenue to Cherry, I, I, I'd like to understand that more because, like I say, I don't have my glasses, I couldn't follow anything other than what he was saying, and then I didn't follow that. But <clears throat> also, I want to know, um, it's being, re where is it being rezoned in the 800 block, and why is it being rezoned to R3? Okay, do I have to repeat my question? No? Oh, will I get all the answers I want? Okay, I will sit down. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Do I answer what you can there, or should we run the line for? We can go on, but we might answer some of the other questions. Ben, do you want to highlight the parcels that um, are in the field? Mm -hmm. So, in terms of the rezoning, um, right now, and as Ben's highlighting this, the the block, the block between 2nd and 3rd Street on the east side is currently zoned as R3. The properties that are on the west side of 2nd Street, that's currently R2. And if you recall back in 2006 when the hospital did the expansion, um, about, about 12 years ago, the part, that part, the new part of the hospital, some of it goes into R2 and some of it stays into, into the R3. It was our opinion as, as staff that it would be better suited if the entire building was in one particular zone as opposed to split down the center. As you can see up there, uh, it's got two shades of green, so it falls underneath R3 requirements under here and then R2 requirements on the left-hand side. Both are exactly the same when it pertains to a hospital, um, but in the event something ever changes with the, the zoning code in terms of R2 and R3, it would be cleaner and easier if the building was all under one particular zone as opposed to split um, arbitrarily down the middle of what used to be second street. Yes. Multiple dwelling what do you mean by that thing? For that area, multiple multiple R2 and R three oh. dwelling number of houses. Yeah, R three is currently multi dwelling um, zoning. So if that ever redevelops into anything it could be uh, multi family dwelling. R two is one in two family buildings. Um, it's just a matter of what the, the zoning is in that. I've been in the hospital as long as I can remember, and there's no plans at this point to, to do anything else. St. Francis to the south is also uh, R3. It's on all. Just the hospital building, not the rest of the block. Just the hospital building, yes. Yeah. Do you have another question here? Um, what are you using the hospital building for? The hospital? Beds? Hospital. Bed? Hospital. Yeah, it's a hospital to expand the hospital. It's an urgent care. So the, the 18,000 square foot building that's going to have is for what? It's for As a honor So I'm Rhonda Bucklew. I live at 14384 Oak Lane. I'm also representing St. Gabriel's Hospital here tonight as a clinic administrator for Family Medical Center. Um, the hospital owns the clinic, so that is a little confusing to most folk. So the clinic building to the north of what it is the true hospital where inpatients stay is actually where the expansion is happening. So yes, there's um, it'll be hospital expansion because the hospital um, includes the clinic services, but the true additional space will be for added primary care services, outpatient services such as behavioral health, nutrition education, ongoing primary care services, 
adding a walk-in service, something this community has wanted for quite some time, um, and added pharmacy space within our clinic building proper. So the expansion of the footprint of the hospital campus will actually be expanding in our outpatient clinic ambulatory services, not the inpatient service side. Outpatient services that include the pharmacy, um, walk-in clinic, Walking. Additional Maybe. behavioral health service space, what? behavioral health services, primary care services, specialty physician services, no, outreach no. physician no, services. No. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And it's also ur urgent care, correct? Yeah, that's the walk. It'll be a walk-in clinic. Yes. Right. We have an ER service already on campus, so we will not be putting an urgent care scale facility, but a walk-in clinic. Yes. And that's okay. So that will be people who pay as they go. Yeah, so walk-in walk clinic services. services will bill insurance, any payer base, but it will be uh, more of a convenience and access for visit for patients after hours, weekends, on a walk-in, non-scheduled basis, yes. What, what are the hours of operation of that? I don't have answers to that particular oh. at this time. We just need to get the building up first. I mean, do you, might, you, might, yeah. you want to answer a question as far as the traffic? Can I answer that right now? Yeah, you did. Thank you. That's clear. I can understand that. Well, the other question that uh, Ms. Pessler had was in regards to the traffic flow through uh, Cherry Avenue and 2nd Street. So on the north side, on the north side here, you still have um, 7th Avenue, I believe that is. It, it would come down to 2nd Street. This would still be allowed to have traffic coming through here, but uh, once you get to about this point, this would become private property. Vehicles would still be able to allow it to, to go through there, is my understanding. Um, you know, larger vehicles would still be, be able to maneuver through here. But at this point is where it would become hospital property. You would still have the connection through there, um, but the request is to vacate basically from this point south and then from this point east uh, to allow for uh, the building that they Okay, but can you tell me exactly where this 18,000 square foot building is going to lay in relation to Cherry Avenue and Philip? Right in here, I'm not sure if you can see the cursor. This is where the proposed building is looking to, be, to sit. Um, and so this would be the, the new footprint that they're looking at putting there. And what, what is that? What? Um, they're adding on to where the clinic is now. Just to the, to the west of it, yes. Family Medical Center. The Family Medical Center. Do you, do you know where the drive through canopy is at the current medical clinic? The, the canopy you could drive under on the west oh, side? Yes, yes. That's. Wait a minute, of course. That's yes. the drive under canopy right now. Okay. So the addition is basically kind of engulfing that. Just it runs almost out to where second currently is, and that's why we have to slightly realign second to allow us to put that addition right in this chunk of space, okay. which is basically driveway and green space right now on the west side of the building. Right there. Okay. So this parking lot stays, gets realigned some, gets reworked a little bit, but for the most part, that road just kind of clipping this corner is what's happening to allow this addition to go there. Any other public comment? So with the way that it's going to be, ahead. sorry, you can go ahead. Go ahead. No. So the way that it's, to this, go ahead. yes, so the way that it's going to be laid out, it's going to be facing directly towards, like, basically directly towards my bedroom. Um, the only window we have in there is a sliding patio door and adding all those extra parking lots is going to add so much more extra noise from plowing at 3 a.m. The way that that angles goes. Because this is your current property? So my pro where that where you're proposing to move the road like right after that sidewalk? Yeah. Yep. That's my house. That's my front door. So this parking lot's there already? Right? Already. And then yep. the second lot is essentially just my yard. So that parking lot is there already, yes. Correct. So the additional parking that's occurring is here. that one. Yep. But it's also going to be bringing that's still real close and more time, more noise. 
and more glare. And love it. Next. Robin Hansel, Lido 7, First Street Southeast. In 2006, I met with Paul Wickman was there, the past city administrator, Carl Agnes, the past CEO and administrator of the hospital, and I was promised as long as I owned my property that the, the house next to me, the Gilder home, would just be nothing but a green space. And in fact, I found an article in the paper proving that. Carl Agnes is quoted as saying, we accommodated her request of not putting parking on the south side of this person's house. When the house that is there now is removed, we will leave the trees and make it a green space. So the hospital will be breaking their promise, their verbal agreement, and verbal agreements are legal. They stick in Minnesota. He promised that as long as I own my property, there would only be a green space there. And there are, I strongly oppose this plan is in its present proposal for a number of reasons. Urgent care is going to dramatically increase the traffic in our neighborhood. There's just no doubt about that. The alleyway that's there now was originally proposed to be straight. The residents at the time that are still living and live there then are myself and Paul Whitman and Betty Pekarski died. Uh, Ms. Warzeka isn't here tonight, but we strongly opposed, and so did Crossroads, who used to own a house to the north of me, the fact of that alleyway being straight because hospital traffic already was from that parking lot at the hospital now it still exists was ripping through and going north to get out quicker there's only a few entrances and exits that anybody can use in an emergency situation and the residents including myself at the time did not want our alleyway becoming a freeway there's little kids we have a lot of bicyclers that go back there right now walkers people walk their dogs go-karts, ATVs, bicyclists, people go from the north of where I live Robin, to the I south. Robin, you have to use your next two minutes right away. You can keep going. Okay. Go ahead. I've been referred as Paul Wakeman. <laughs> I live at 800 Second Street. So I'm the next one up on 2nd and 7th. To continue with Robin saying, we asked that that alley be crooked and put a tree there for some privacy because the kids mm -hmm. from the south were running up and down the alley like crazy. And we asked that you know, that you can turn it to the other one with the existing parking lot, have it have this parking lot. They wanted to move that land. We want to ask them to shut this off. So mm -hmm. We didn't get all the alley traffic That's right. coming through. Now, I've looked at this and I really don't like that. But on the other hand, if people are pulling off Terry into here, they're going to go up the alley anyway if they can't get in the parking lot. So I'm not real, I don't like it. You know, and then we got to send it out to Terry because it was supposed to be an employee lot. And uh, if it's an employee lot, then it should be coming in on Terry. The now chair is gone the way this is designed. So uh, the other thing is this this conversation is the first I've heard of this stuff. I heard it through the grapevine, but the hospital has not consulted the neighborhood again Correct. ahead of time. And I, my understanding is they want to start this thing out first. So here we are three weeks from out first, we've got the plans all drawn and they haven't talked to us. The administration has changed at the hospital and the city since we did this. Yep. And, and Robin did ask for that access. We kept the screen space. I don't know that they agreed to it, but she asked for it. Because, you know, uh, so the issue here is, again, I wouldn't bet that anybody is going to go around the block and put in Cherry Avenue. To, you know, to get into that plus size, this idea of reduced traffic in there. You know, uh, Time's up, Paul. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else wish to speak? Yep, sure would. Okay. Okay, 
There's an issue of glare. There's an issue of the alley traffic, which will increase. There's an issue of the stormwater retention. The suggestion in the packet, as far as my reading, is that the hospital wants to combine all their properties in order to make it look like they don't need to add stormwater retention for the overflow of water that's going to come because of adding the, tarp, the extra tarp. That's deceptive to do that. It's wrong to do that. There's going to be a lot of extra noise, car horns, car alarms, door slamming, uh, street streets, uh, sweepers, private street sweepers. The snow plows are the biggest issue. Lights of cars coming and going probably all hours of the night. We should at this point know the hours of the, uh, how long this clinic is going to be open. Uh, they don't have that. That's, that's wrong to do that to neighbors. They're, and the hospital wants a 50 foot setback normal to put this, they want to eliminate that and have their building closer to Cammie's house and mine than they're supposed to be legally allowed to. Um, in, it says in the last time we were uh, met about this in 2006 that it's not supposed to be injurious to the neighborhood. I'm sorry, but this is. We lived through two years of a nightmare. They were removing a home next to me at 3.30 in the morning. Dump trucks and gravel trucks went behind our property and ruined the alley. The city and the hospital had to pay to repave it. The, the construction people put their pipes and stuff on private property. They weren't supposed to do that. They operated numerous times outside of the law. I had to get a hold of the city and complain about it. And this city attorney, Tony Wetzel, had to write a letter to Mortensen Construction and tell them if they did it one more time, they'd get cited with a $1,000 fine. I have that letter on me today. Uh, the construction, the delivery of, of uh, the ingredients to make this, all the materials, when are they going to be delivered? Robert. We have an ordinance to prevent uh, so we can sleep at night. That was violated during that time. I'm strongly opposed. Anyone else wish to speak? Third so, Paul. Anyone else would speak? Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Um, I, I just want to get clear. Yes. Um, Two minutes. This, okay. What? Um, Cherry Avenue will angle. Show me how it will angle again in relation to the building. Sit.